Good evening. Welcome to our SAT vocabulary study for week 18. Contrary to what I might have mentioned in class today, we will have verbs again this week, which will make it a little bit easier for us to, at the end of the video, do the homework once again on infinitives. I do less explanation this time on infinitives because I will assume that you took notes or um, you know remember um, the basics of infinitives. So um, if you did not, you may want to go back to last week's video toward the end and um, look through that particular lesson. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. I have related all of these words this week to our study of the Holocaust. Our first word is acquiesce. And to acquiesce is to agree to something, to give in or comply with someone's request or demand without any kind of protest at all. You just go ahead and give in uh, for one reason or another. And in this particular circumstance, the Jews did not always acquiesce to German orders. In fact, the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising in 1943 is an example of resistance. And we will be studying about the Warsaw Ghetto and this particular uprising. So acquiesce, to give in, comply, agree without protesting. If uh, your mom asks you to um, clean your room um, and you acquiesce, you didn't stomp your feet and uh, find a million reasons not to do it. You just went ahead and did it anyway. Our next word is berate. And to berate is to scold someone strongly or vehemently. Uh, if you were to place this on a continuum of scold and chide and admonish, which we had last week, berate would be um, much higher on that scale. So the connotation is stronger. Nazi soldiers in the ghettos would berate Jews by shouting insults and imposing physical assault on them as is indicated in this troubling photograph. Next we have efface. And to efface is to wipe something out, obliterate it, completely do away with it, rub it away like it never existed, um, completely gone from existence. Um, if you did something that you weren't supposed to do, you might try to um, get rid of all of the evidence and therefore um, throw it away, burn it, what have you, in order to um, make sure that no one ever found out that it happened. And in another context, according to what we're studying, Hitler's war against the Jews was an attempt to eliminate an entire people, to efface their identity altogether. And notice here in the sentence, I basically gave context clues um, of the sort that I'm kind of redefining the word in other words, so to speak, so that my reader understands the meaning of um, efface and they understand that it also means eliminate. Our next word is repulse, and it simply means to disgust. Um, I imagine that there might have been some things that you've read so far that have repulsed you. It's safe to say that the crimes of the Holocaust repulse every decent person. And finally, fathom. To fathom is to understand something or comprehend it. Um, sometimes you hear someone say, I can't fathom why Mrs. Delaney would give me homework over the weekend, meaning you don't understand nor do you comprehend why such an evil thing would occur. And finally, um, using it in a sentence, it's difficult to fathom how the Nazis were able to execute the persecution and annihilation of so many innocent people. This, um, I'll show you uh, a larger version of this in class on the smart board, but this is, these are some of the records that were kept of how many of the various groups of individuals that were targeted were um, executed in one month. Um, 
so we'll take a look at that in class. It's pretty repulsive if you ask me. Okay, on to our homework. This was a short one this week. Okay, um, I'll just go ahead and read this. You can lock it on and um, you know, you're on your own to make sentences um, using infinitives. So last week on the video we learned about verbals and there are three kinds of verbals. Gerunds, participles, and infinitives. And the one kind of verbal that we worked on was the infinitive. This week you're going to once again create sentences where you use the verbs as infinitives. Remember that the word to goes in front of that verb. And also remember that even though it's a verb, it's not acting like a verb in a sentence when it is an infinitive. It either acts like a noun, an adjective, or an adverb in the sentence. I want you to put a box around the infinitive in each of your sentences, and I also want you to label or identify whether you've used this as an adjective, a noun, or an adverb. Um, to help you figure out whether it's an adjective, noun, or adverb, think about this. If you're using it as an adjective, ask yourself, is that infinitive modifying a noun? Is it giving more information about a noun? If it's acting as a noun, is it either the subject of the sentence, and often it'll be at the beginning to efface, um, and, and then the rest of the sentence, or is it the object of a verb? So there's an action, and then the infinitive follows that. It will often be a noun. Um, if that's the case. And finally, is it acting as an adverb? Uh, and in that case, it further explains why some sort of action took place. So you generally will have an action involved and the infinitive will further explain the reason for that action. So hopefully those little tricks will help you better identify um, the the, the usage um, of the infinitive in that sentence, which is part of um, what our Common Core Standard asks us to be able to master by the end of the eighth grade year. All right, if you have any questions on that, go ahead and ask me in class tomorrow, um, provided this is Monday night, because it's due Wednesday, or um, you can send me an email. I should be available both evenings until about 10, 10.30. Thank you. Have a good evening.